Sir, we're just driving up and down the road. We're just driving up and down the road and we see a car back there we like. Which one? Well, that yellow thing. We like that little yellow car back there. Oh, you like that, huh? Yeah. Oh, that's a pretty nice car. Yeah. Well, we like Mustangs. Bob looking over this car is going to be kind of like Godzilla meets Bambi. He'll crush it. No, I'm serious. I think you do. Yeah, we'd like to have that thing. <laughs> well, Bob's going to appraise it, see if he can buy it, and for how much. In southern Wisconsin, stored on jack stands, yellow with hubcaps and trim rings and black stripes, this 1970 Boss 302 Mustang. The tires. 11,530 miles. I don't know if anybody ever kept the original tires for 50 years. Father Time, he did. A half century had passed, and there stood the original owner, trying his best to keep the car of his youth from aging. Discovered by this man, Bob Perkins. Well, how'd you find this thing? Well, he called me. Nobody better to call. Classic Mustangs, his lifelong passion. Just look at his showroom here, where you'll see just about anything Mustang, 1964 and a half to 73, with a major emphasis on 69 to 70 muscle cars and Boss Mustangs. Like this 1500 mile 1970 Boss 302. And this 1600 mile 1970 Boss 429. His collecting philosophy, uh, very simple. The best cars when they're done were the better cars to start with. This 11,000 mile Boss 302 just might fit in that category. Chrome lid is really nice, really nice. He's just got a, a massive amount of original paperwork in here. The owner's manual. There's the owner's manual card with Daryl's name on it. Bob's the head authenticity judge for the Mustang Club of America. And their technical advisor, when the judges have a problem, he'll have the answer. Daryl was in luck. Bob only lived 80 miles away. So we got to get on 45 south. Let's see if Bob can make the purchase on this cold day in February. I thought winter was going to be rough. <laughs> no, I come here a lot. I'm Jerry. I read a lot of your articles. Oh, really? You read them too? Well, I mean, uh, I do YouTube. With, with YouTube yeah. Oh, okay. But all right. Hot ride, you do a hot ride too. I do hot rod. Yeah, I do all that. Been coming to Bob since the 80s. Really? 81. The first thing collectors look for is original paint, and we were not disappointed. The, the paint looks like it's going to clean up really good. There's going to be a couple of little areas where, where's that light? Down in here where there's, you know, it's got a little bit of road rash, but some of that will clean off, and uh, you just, it needs a good clean to really evaluate it, but there, there's no rust holes. There's no severe surface rust. The antenna mask I broke off, no big deal. Um, still has the original trico wiper blade assemblies, um, all the original glass. And I can just tell what, you can look down the sides and on the top of the car, there's no door dings or dents. I love the, the amount of orange peel through here where you can see, even though it's a little dirty, you can see the orange peel where the light's giving it a shadow. Through here, it's just perfect. Ford used single stage acrylic enamel. That's the best paint they ever put on a car. Really? Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's hard to get that look, to duplicate it like that, because most people, when they repaint them, they've got to sand them and buff them to get all the garbage out of them. Yeah. But, I know a guy that used to work for a fire department, fire, where they made fire engines. And, and yeah. But boy, that guy, he could spray them fire trucks yeah. when he was drunk. Yeah. From a hangover. If he wasn't, he, he shook, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but boy, it, it was good back then. Well, a lot of painters, <laughs> I think they... they and I'm a painter, but I think they, they inhaled too many fumes. That could be too, yeah. <laughs> Man alive, uh, yeah. it, it was about to get <laughs> deep in here. So, if we had an untouched Boss 302 here, Bob Perkins would know. I mean, head judge and owning all those Boss Mustangs and restoring them. So, Bob looking over this car, how cool is that? I mean, what doesn't he know about Boss Mustangs? So, we barely get the hood open and Bob launches into details. You can see the, the maroon stripe on the alternator highlighting the engineering number in it. Collectors love this stuff, but 
How many of these got tossed over the years? And on the heater hose, you can see the yellow stripe with Autolite logo. What heater hose? Where? Right here. And the engineering number that's in white ink. Okay. That's an anti-backfire valve. Most people remove the smog hardware, not Daryl. Did you street race it just a tiny bit? Just a little bit, not much, because I, I, I never abused it, you know, you know. Well, you never disconnected the rev limiter. No, I never did. No. I like that the rev limiter has never been disconnected. That's really cool. Still has the uh, half inch uh, masking tape that held the wires together, and it's still got the logo that's really nice and legible. Here's the original invoice. It shows all the options. Take a good picture of that. It shows everything on there. 391 axle ratio, radial, 70 amp battery, rear sport seat, that's full down seat, tack and tripometer, console, decor group, and clock. There's nothing that's deteriorated beyond the point that it can't be brought back to like new condition. And now we can see the carburetor. And uh, you can see he's changed a couple clamps on the hose and then the carburetor has the engineering number on it, DOZF 9510Z. And then over here is the carburetor aluminum identification tag. The carburetor solenoid still intact. The spade here has been repaired. Of course, the original aluminum intake. Oh yeah, yeah, that's all original. The uh, original distributor vacuum advance. Even that circular carburetor gasket came new on this car. There's a little bit of blue on it from rubbing on the air cleaner. Original fan shroud. You can see it's the old style with the fiberglass strands in the texture there. See that the exhaust manifold heat shield is like mint. Judges can go on for hours. Original dated spark plug wires, PCV valve and hose. Oop, that radiator hose has been replaced. Looking at the underside of the hood. This is the second generation hood where it has the spot welds instead of the tabs to hold the inner and the outer shell together up here. So this is like a gold mine find, right? Like it. Yeah, for authenticity, it's just and just a little bit of cleaning is gonna bring up more stuff. I can see barely here the outline of the OK stamp on the valve cover. And I can see mouse turds on the shock tower price. I know when I first bought it at the dealership, the mechanic he, he took it out, set it up, you know. You went up to 30 and, and first year and they buried the needle a third or second. I said, holy Christ, that's my car. What are you doing there, buddy? Yeah. So he was just... Hammering it. Hammering it. Now, um, I, I noticed there's there's a little bit, it looks like little excess grease and stuff on the on the heads. Did the valve cover gaskets leak a little Never bit? Never change them. The car has deluxe interior. The, the seats, even though they're a little bit dusty and dirty you can see they've hardly been sat on especially this passenger seat you can see how puffy the the, the foam pads are under the seat covers the deluxe door panels are mint they're nice and straight there's no elbow dents from uh, passenger sitting in there the back seat looks really nice it just needs a good cleaning the console looks mint the shifter looks mint the lens on the clock Looks excellent. The dash pad's not cracked. The worst thing I saw on the interior is it's got a couple little mouse holes where the mouse got in the headliner. But I, I think that interior is going to be nearly flawless if it was cleaned up. Okay. Who cares about a trunk? Collectors do. Watch this. Yeah, the, the trunk is one of the areas that really intrigued me on this car. Um, couple things that are not typical on the 70 Boss Reel 2. Typically, they didn't use the, the stainless rear window trim. They used the uh, regular steel and then they, they painted it the texture black like the deck would. Mm -hmm. And uh, w what I really liked was inside the jam here, um, we in the Mustang hobby, we, we've argued for years about how the different um, assembly plants masked off the area in the trunk different. And uh, this is the first one I've seen where they painted the whole valley in here low gloss black. And you can see they never even removed the masking tape where they taped it off. Dearborn Assembly Procedure. That tape's never leaving this car. On the left side of the car and on the right side here, they did it similar 
but they did pull the tape off. But that that's uh, the first car I've seen where they they've actually taped it off in that manner. I thought I thought that was really cool that the car hasn't been washed enough where anybody's even you know they missed it at the factory and being that the it had black overspray and the tape they just missed it and didn't even pull it off. That tape is still there. It's still there after 50 years. Hold on, there's more to this trunk than meets the eye. The other thing I really liked on the car was a lot of people don't pay much attention to trunk underlayment, but that's probably as nice a 70 underlayment as I've ever seen. A few little mouse turds over in the corner there again, but that stuff, once once you take that out, of, say if he had to clean the tank out to get it to run one time because it's stored for years, you can't hardly get that stuff out, especially when it's cold like this without busting it up and it usually gets pitched. Wow. And another thing really, really nice in this car is the wrapping on the trunk harness. It's, uh, see that there? See how it's got the different colors and stuff in it? It's it's just fabulous. It's it's perfect. Point and it out. I'm not sure what you're right here. And and it goes all the way through here, over to the other side, and then up in here. You know, no no damage from rodents or anything like that. It's just fabulous. It's really mint. And that's the original trunk mat. And uh, it's really close to mint. It just needs a good cleaning. What about the spare tire? Original here? spare, original jack. Um, the little valve stem cap's not on there. He thought he might have used that on something else over the years. But the uh, jack uh, instruction sticker on the on the jacks, not the typical style with the rounded edges either. That's kind of unique. And being that it's a really late car, I'm sure that's why um, why it's a little bit different than what you typically see. Well, yeah, no sport slats. No sport slats, no rear wing. It's got the original front spoiler on it. Still got the original H pipe, the two mufflers, but being that he's he's run it a little bit on the jack stands like this, I think he said he starts it like once a month. Um, the the mufflers are a little bit weak because of the water sitting in there not not drying out. But uh, the undersides um, nice. He he did get under there several years ago and sprayed a little uh, undercoating out of a can in there just to kind of protect some of the bare metal. What are your plans on the car? Well, keep looking at it and load it. I'm saying, I, someday, like I said, I'm 74 and you never know. I'm saying, and I wanted to, when I do die, I hope it goes, you know, so I don't know what to do. I don't know. Got to be a tough decision after 50 years. Rather than push for a sale right now, Bob would give Daryl a little time and himself a little time too. If I want to go to a person that would really appreciate it. You know, that's how I feel, you know what I'm saying? A way for an owner to say, I might sell you the car, but give me some space. Of course, Bob could use a little space too, get back to his shop, relax a little bit, and figure out how much he could pay for this car. Bob had much bigger fish to fry anyway, like this 1971 Boss 302, a prototype that you see here on the rotisserie. Oh, what I really liked about the yellow car is, I said the rarest option you have is your paperwork, original one owner car, and it has 11,000 original miles. So it's got the bones to be a, a great car. And it is a great car, but it could be as good a restoration, restored car. It's a great candidate for a total restoration to make a thoroughbred car. From his shop, a week later, Bob told us on the phone. Wholesale, I, I believe the car is the way it sits, just the way we looked at it, in the forty-five to $50,000 range. And retail, partially depending on how well the car would clean up with a, you know, a, a day and a half of cleaning it, possibly in the fifty-five to $65,000 range depending on how nice the paint cleans up, and that's going to be a big determining factor. Now, the headliner needs to be replaced and a few little things, but that's all, all minor stuff in my opinion, but I just like the car because it's one owner, and all the paperwork and documentation and originality of the car, and uh, I'm not sure that the car really should ever be restored. It depends on how it cleans up. When the time comes, if Daryl decides he wants to part with the car, I'd love to be first in line. I think my fingers are numb. 
I won't mention the name, but probably the best uh, acrylic enamel painter on 40 Fords. Painted in his underwear. Really? <laughs> so I couldn't get no, no lint or anything on the car. This looks like your contract. Was that for the loan? Yeah, well, yeah I suppose right, right. Okay. Did, tell us about buying it. Did you put money down and put so much a month? What was it? Yeah, I, 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 I borrowed a thousand dollars on it. I don't know, two or three dollars an hour. <laughs> Total cash price forty four seventy fifty. That was with the sales tax and license and title. No trade in. No, I don't. I never trade cars. Then I keep my cars. All right. <laughs> I, I, I never did trade ins because I always thought you got more money off by not trading the car in. That was the uh, envelope to send in your your payment every month to Ford Motor Credit. <laughs> and he's got the paperwork for the contract and everything. Isn't that neat? This might draw a lot of well, you look at the whole car. Nothing was changed other than stuff he had to change. The tires are the four original tires that the car was born with. I checked the date codes on them. They're on the outside. It's right here in this block. It says YY NBJBC1. May of 1970. Trim rings and hubcaps are mint. The tread wear on the tires is all nice and even. Usually the second row of tread will want to sink down in. That's a part of a bias tire trademark. You can feel it with your hand just a little bit if you rub it across there, Jerry, where this is just a little bit lower. The right side, both tires have a little bit of road rash from the curb, but the left side are, are nice enough they could go on a killer show car. A guy that's going to do a trailer concourse car or a thoroughbred car, I'm sure they'd be thrilled to death to have original tires rather than reproductions. What are we looking at? I want to get the, the number off of it here. See it says A13 right there. These clamps didn't show up until probably end of May June and July on, on the 70 Boss 302. Instead of the Wittick number 34, they use this, this band style clamp here. And uh, if we took this car to an MCA show and put it in the unrestored class, probably 95% of the judges would say it has the wrong clamp on it because it's not typical, but it is correct for this car. Original Autolite breather cap. Um, the uh, Breather holes here is the original okay. nice air cleaner assembly. Daryl, yeah. we've been thinking this over, okay? Yeah. I'm thinking over real seriously. We, we'll go 500 for it if you'll kick in the parts. How much? We'll go 500 for it if you'll kick in the parts. Yeah. 500 <laughs> bucks. Okay. Yeah. Think it over. Yeah, okay. I'll, let me I'll, take I'll, your I'll, time. I'll, 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 I'll sleep on that one. <laughs> <laughs> well.